they threw me in. I got 100 in the Melbourne Test match, and then I got 180 in the Sydney Test match straight after it, and that was it. I was off and running. I remember. Yeah, you wouldn't remember, remember those, Blakey. Yeah, I, I do. do. I, was a, I was a young bloke. It was a – yeah. And, Greg, yeah. so saying all of that, and we could talk for hours about your um, success in, in cricket and, and your averaging in your mid-50s, but with when you went through your um, ducks, six or seven ducks, whatever you got in the row, yeah, thanks, ma- That's true, but yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm just thinking back to it, though. Thanks for I- reminding me. <laughs> and the media, the way the media, I mean, obviously the media can do a lot to you at the time, but you, and you have said this, you were actually getting yourself, you know, you talk about getting yourself out, but you, you were getting some pretty good bowling. You just nicked everything too, didn't you, at that time? Yeah, look, I, it was for the first time in my career, we, you know, by that stage we had three young kids. Our youngest, Jonathan, had just been born. Um, and I was a bit distracted. Judy was struggling with three kids under six, um, you know, on her own in, in Brisbane, no family around. Mm. Um, and she was finding it really tough. And there I am off playing cricket and having a great time. And every time I rang home, you know, it was um, one disaster after another. And, um, you know, I, I felt really guilty about being away at that, that stage. But I, you know, I, I couldn't make the, the decision to uh, walk away from it. Mm. Um, so, you know, it was um, the first time, as I say, in my cricket career that I'd actually got distracted by what was going on off the field. Normally, I was pretty good at compartmentalising, you know, Warney perfected it later on, but, mm. you know, you it <laughs> didn't matter what was happening off the field, I could still focus on what was happening on the cricket field, but that was the first time I got distracted and I had a couple of failures, mm. and then I got into a bit of a you know, the anxiety cycle and um, worrying about getting out rather than looking to score runs. And when you when you do that, you don't move as well. Mm. And what I found out a few weeks later, I mean, it only lasted for about three weeks. It felt like three years. But, mm. you know, it, it was, the media were giving it to me. And yeah, then, you we, know, had to, was, we had to bloody watch it. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have been much fun. I'll tell you, it wasn't much fun in the middle of it. It obviously wasn't much fun um, on, the, on the sidelines either. But, it wasn't until I failed in a in a game in and most of the ducks were thankfully were in, in one day games. But yeah. you're right. I mean I was hitting out first ball. It wasn't like I was struggling for mm. you know, an hour and making ten. I mm. I was getting out first ball mostly. Mm. I think there were three or four first ballers in that. Mm. And that's why, you know, the media at a press conference, somebody in the media said, Well, you know, why why do you think you're batting so bad? And I said, Well actually I, I'm not batting that badly, I'm just getting out. Mm. In the nets, I was you know I was batting as well as I'd ever batted, but it's hard to bat badly when you only face one ball. Yeah. We, we said that's me so, and you, Blakey. We were doing that's right. They they were <laughs> the, the media thought I was taking the Mickey when I said I'm not batting that badly, but I, I didn't feel like I was. I think cricketers would have understood that. Though. A lot of cricketers would have understood that. You know, you, you just, yeah. Look, you, I think anyone who knew knew about um, the game would have understood it. But we're talking about journalists here. <laughs> um, Good point. The um and the next bloke said to me, "Well, when do you reckon you're going to make a your next run?" And I said, "Look, I know there's a big score just around the corner. What I can't tell you is how long the street is." <laughs> That's very good. And when um, when was that? Yeah, so you did obviously score. You did actually. But when was that? so obviously after that? What was your big? Did you get a hundred? Well, I, I failed in in the game in Melbourne. I think it was a. It might have even been a test match. Anyway. Um, I walked back into the dressing room and I was, you know, I mean, I was lost. I really didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. This had never, never happened before. And I was sort of, I just sat down on the bench. I was taking my pads off and I'm sort of thinking, you know, well, maybe the, the street's a bit longer than I thought it was, you know. Mm. Um, and Rudy Webster, who uh, was a West Indian doctor who lived in Melbourne and had managed the West Indian team during World Series cricket. Yeah. Walk into the dressing room um, and he, you know, said hello. And I, I don't think I greeted him, you know, um, overly effusively. I might have given you a good day, Ruth. And uh, he said, mate, are you watching the ball? Mm. And I said something along the lines of, <laughs> what do you think I'm watching? <laughs> and he said, no, 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 no. I mean, are you really watching the ball? He said, no, yeah. don't have to answer the question now. But, you know, you've always been so good at watching the ball. Mm. When you get back to the hotel, just have a bit of a think about it. Mm. That was another wake-up call and another chance of reflection. And when I 
calmed down and got back to the hotel. Rudy was right. Because I'd walked off a couple of times, got out first ball, and I remember walking off once in at the SCG and once at the MCG. And I sort of looked back at the sight screen. And I thought, I didn't see the ball. Mm. So that's how well I was hitting them, bangers. I yeah. couldn't even see them, but I was still <laughs> nicking them. Well, mate, my road was the Pacific Highway, so my street was pretty long when I was playing. But, Greg, <laughs> Greg, when you – when you mention all of that, and I do remember, it was front page news. You know, Greg yeah. Chappell, duck, 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 and all that stuff. And and um, and we obviously mentioned earlier on we've got a bit of a – and there is a mental health angle to this podcast. Mate, how, how were you um, emotionally through that when you were copying all of that? Look, I could, I could separate myself from the out, external criticism. You know, it was more me, what, you know, I was struggling to deal with, with myself. Um, and, you know, the teammates were sort of, you know, treading on eggshells, a bit scared to say anything, um, obviously. But Dennis and, Lee were, you know, Dennis and I were great, great mates and still, you know, stay, uh, stay in touch. Mm. The, the, the teammates were very supportive. We were lucky. You know, we were in a pretty supportive environment. Again, you know, it's, it, it, we hear a lot about mental illness in this day and age in, in top-level sport. Mm. It's funny, you know, we were we were playing the game as part timers, mm. but it it was a very supportive environment because you know, we, we, apart from the captain, everyone else had a roommate, mm-hmm. so you weren't ever allowed to sit in your room on your own and stew about things. Mm. If you had a bad day, you had a roommate or one of your other teammates to say, "Come on, mate, we're going for a beer," or "We're you know going to go out and have a feed," or whatever. Mm. You were never left alone to sit in your room and brood about it. So I was never left alone to sit there and worry about what was happening. You know, I wasn't happy about it, but it was, come on, mate, we're off to dinner and we're going here, we're going there, we're going to do this and do that. Mm. So the environment with your teammates, unknowingly, I mean, no one was sort of aware of the fact that they were doing the right thing there and being supportive and Mm. making sure that someone didn't have time to get into the depth of depression. Mm. 